In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the website Data Wrapper to create a personalized map of your neighborhood or an area around you. On your web browser, go to datawrapper.de. Click on the Start Creating button and it'll open up a new window. At the top of the page, click on New Map. From there, we'll have three choices. We are going to use the locator map today. On this section, we are going to add our items to our map. You can use the Add Marker button if you know exactly where you want to go, or you can use the search bar. Think of the search bar as being like using Google Maps. Click in the search bar and start typing your location. If it is a well-known location, you can try to type it in. You'll see it's starting to think about it. Once the menu pops up, if you find the one you want, you can go ahead and click directly on the one that you want. It will automatically add a marker to your map and zoom in to that location. You can use the small arrows in the lower right-hand corner to adjust the map size and to zoom in on the map just like you would in Google Maps. Let's go ahead and customize our marker. We might not need all of this information. I'm going to erase the address and leave just the title. There are lots of presets that we can use if we want to highlight our location. I'm going to click on the symbol, and because this is a school, I'm going to find a symbol that looks like a school. I can also change the color of the symbol. I'm going to choose this orange. When I click on More Options, this is where I can adjust the font size and the color of the font. I can make it bold or italics, make it all capital if I want, or change the distance between the letters. I can also adjust the font size by clicking the up and down arrows. Let's change the color. I'm going to match it with the color of the symbol that I chose. You can also change the way that the words look. You can outline it with different colors if you like. I'm going to choose no color. We can also change where the text fits around the symbol. This will be helpful when you add more symbols. We can also change the scale or the size of the symbol that we're using. We can put a box around the words. We can put a rounded box around the words, or we can have just the text. I'm going to choose a rounded box. You can also choose to draw a line between the marker and the text. Either there are different arrows to choose from and different line types. You can also decide how far away you want your line to be. You can move the text around to get this adjusted as you like. For now, I'm not going to have a line on mine. I'll go back up to the search bar and I'll continue to add another item. This time I'm adding in a park. I see it pop up, so I'll go ahead and click on that. And you'll see how the map relocates to the location. I'm going to go ahead and erase the address and keep just the title. I'll go back and I'll choose an icon that matches a park icon. I'll choose this tree. Then I'll change my color to green for my symbol. And I'll go down to text and I'll do the same thing. I'll go through and adjust my text to have a rounded box and change the scale to make it a little bit larger. I'll continue to go through and add a few more markers that I plan on having in my map. Sometimes you'll type in something and it might not show up on your map when you type it in. If this is the case, you can find the address in Google Maps and type in the direct address, and then your item should come up. Once the marker has been selected, you can delete the whole address and then give it the title that you would like. You can go through and adjust your symbols and your colors, just as you have done with the other markers. If you notice with this Fairhaven Bikes marker, the text overlaps the other Village Books text. Here I can change my alignment and adjust it to how I like. 
Once I have in all my symbols, I will go down to the Proceed button at the bottom of the screen. Now we are in the Map Styles section. From here, I can choose what type of map I would like to have. There are lots of options to choose from. You can change to an Earth view, a gray view, a maritime view. I'm going to choose the Earth view. And I'm going to turn on 3D buildings. Now that I have my map, there are some other neat things you can do, like tilting and rotating. As you can see, as I start tilting, and then I close in on areas that have buildings, you'll see how the 3D buildings show up. Depending on the type of map that you want to have, this could be really useful. I can also use the Rotate button to rotate the map and get the exact view that I would like to have. Depending on the objects you have in your map, this could be very useful. You'll get a completely different view depending on how you rotate and how you zoom. Make sure you take the time to align it so that you include all of the parts that you like on your map. Another neat feature is the Map Extras. Here we can add a scale bar in whatever units we like. We can also add a north arrow and we can choose an inset map depending on what location we're at. This is the world map. I'm going to change this to a different one. I'm going to choose region and you'll notice that the regions automatically populate. It will give me the state, the county, and even the city. You'll see it located in the bottom right hand corner. Once I'm done, I'll click on Proceed, and this will take me to the Title section. Here, I can annotate the map. I need to think about what kind of map I'm making, and so I need to choose an appropriate title for my map. I can also add in a description with more details. And down in the byline, this is where I can add my name. If you would like to add a key or legend for your map, in the Add Key for Marker section, Click on Show Key. Here, you will get options for all of your markers. You'll see them automatically in your map. In the section below, you can click and then assign each marker a name. As you assign the markers the names, they will show up in your map. When you are done adding your markers, at the bottom of the page, click on Proceed. From here, you can decide to send an email to yourself with the picture or you can also just take a screenshot of your map and save it that way. Once you have the screenshot, you're able to upload this to another website or use it in a slide deck or however you would like to choose to use it on your own. I would love to see what kind of maps you created. You can follow me on Instagram at Smith Visualizations or you can follow me on Twitter at Smith R. Chris. I hope to see your map soon. Good luck.